Christians are redeemed by the blood of Christ. There is no other religion upon this earth that requires the redemption of a soul by the blood of Christ. Not even Judaism, because Judaism still requires the redemption through the blood of goats and bulls. And then there is no other counter-religion that comes along as Christianity does. And dearly beloved, that's where Christianity veers away from any made man's religion or man's made uh, doctrines and understanding uh, that is perpetrated to the heart of man or causing man to follow certain rules and regulations rather than following the pure actions that Jesus Christ did on the cross on Calvary. But to be redeemed by the blood, what does it really mean to be redeemed? Why did we have to be redeemed in the first place? Because, dearly beloved, first of all, we were born bent away from Christ. We were born in rebellion even before we knew how to speak. When we were ushered or helped from our mother's womb, we were shaped, molded, and created at that moment to be bent from God and the ways of God. And now you might ask a question, why would someone create someone in that fashion? Well, it wasn't God's intention. It was because of Adam's failure to obey. And that sin of rebellion fell upon us as believers. So we now, as people, so we now need a Redeemer to bring us back. To the place of originality where uh, uh, Adam was before he sinned against God. So now we are the children of Adam. So we must be born again that we might be the children of God once again. And that is through Jesus Christ. So we are redeemed by the blood. We are redeemed from the power of sin and the curse of the law. When you and I were redeemed by the blood of Christ, uh, in other words, we were bought, as the word says, a widow price, more precious than gold, more precious than silver, more precious than the blood of bulls or goats or turtle doves, but we were bought by the blood of of the Lord Jesus Christ. Redeem, redeem in the Old Testament meant this, that one was delivered from bondage. In other words, they were, they were redeemed based on a payment of a redeemer. If someone was a slave in that particular time, in, in the onset of Judaism. If one was a slave, according to God's laws, another could come and redeem that individual from slave, from enslavement. He may have been a slave because his parents owed a debt and it was required that that young man then work off that debt to that uh, individual who that family was indebted to. So that child might become a slave to that uh, other individual. Well, someone could come along and redeem that child by paying a certain price. Or that individual who had become a slave, someone could come and redeem that person. And so, 
this is what God did for us through the Lord Jesus Christ. He redeemed us, but we have to accept <clears throat> that redemption price. Just because you paid the price for a person to be redeemed from slavery does not mean that that person will leave from that place of slavery. That happened in instances after the Civil War. There were those who uh, desired to remain a slave, even though the proclamation of emancipation uh, was declared and slaves were set free. There were those who decided to stay on in that, ca in that capacity. That was their choice. But the law said now that they were redeemed, that they were no longer a slave. But that person felt better by staying right where they were. As many became even sharecroppers, but they remain where they were, where maybe certain rights they had now because they were now sharecroppers but yet they were still under a certain kind of authority. And that's what happens, dearly beloved. We must make a clear choice to know that we have been redeemed from bondage of sin. We have re been redeemed from the curse that was upon the law when we become uh, believers. So we are redeemed what a powerful word when the word of God says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin and according to the riches of his grace. Every time that God does something for us, it's in the midst, it's in the attitude of his divine grace and his divine mercy. And that's why, dearly beloved, we are called to have mercy. We are called to share the grace of Almighty God because we have been given so much grace and so much mercy. We in reality, we deserve much, much less. So, dearly beloved, you have been redeemed by the blood of Christ. And without the shedding of blood, there is no redemption. The Lord bless you this day.